Hello. Uh, welcome once again to this show that we call City Sins. And, and as you are aware, we've been raising issues of cities. And today we are going to discuss one of the most pertinent issues that the cities face, and that's about our toilets. Uh, also because of the fact that uh, we today is World Toilets Day, November 19, and the UN has given theme for this day as accelerating change. So what does accelerating change mean? I mean does it mean only to produce more toilets? Uh, when we discuss about toilets, is it just uh, an engineering malaise? Or is it more than that? We've seen Swachh Bharat mission, which focused on open defecation, but that has not stopped. So is it just an engineering malaise or is it a cultural question? What is a toilet? A toilet is, is it a manifestation just of some uh, infrastructure problem? Or is it also a convergence of public health? Is it also a convergence of uh, many other agencies, of gender, of caste that we witness in the cities? For all these issues, today we are going to discuss with one of the very prominent faces in our country who's worked from the whole question of the praxis of the design. And you do not produce knowledge, as she, as she rightly says. It's the knowledge that gets generated in a very democratic sense. What is this democratic sense? Can toilet be your image? I think that's what we are going to discuss. And what are the major disruptions? But before we understand the disruptions, what is the major hindrance for a major disruption to happen? And through this disruption, what are the new processes that we have to invent for a better toilet, a better living. So today we have with us uh, Ganga, who, uh, who has done phenomenally good work uh, in the South, in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, and uh, who is quite instrumental into uh, what she called the, the pragsy, if, I, if I'm right, Ganga, the, the 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 praxis of design, you know, who's an who's an urban designer by, and uh, we've seen how uh, she, I mean, she and her team, they were instrumental into uh, not just uh, uh, understanding the nuances of toilet, but how it's uh, it's it's a people's issue, how it's 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 a it's a completely a new paradigm, and that what we witnessed in uh, in Kerala where. She's been able to work, bring in communities, bring in people. And Ganga, if you could just tell me the 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 movement that you lead, it's called uh, uh, it's city, it's toilet, huh? Yeah. So it's, it, it's the organization as Kakus. Yeah, Kakus. Uh, so we we have a technology also uh, innovated out of it. It's called Kakus app. No, but the organization that that that, that you lead. I mean. Oh, okay. Um, so that it, it's called Recycle Bin. Recycle bin, yeah. Recycle bin is, is, is that. So yeah, we straight away uh, come to you. Right? I mean, I don't have to tell you the, uh, the the details of the challenges that we have. We had Swachh Bharat Mission 1.0. Now we have 2.0. Uh, we know Swachh Bharat Mission meant, I mean, primarily for uh, on, uh, I mean, to get rid of open defecation. But we still find our cities uh, are are still grappling with, with those issues. But at the same time, even the toilets that have been constructed, there is no add-on to that. I mean, how do we treat the waste that, that gets, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, how, I mean the, the entire process of, uh, of uh, treating the waste, I think, uh, in a generic sense, and what specifically you've been able to do. So over to you, Ganga. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so uh, so I, the best way I want to introduce or probably uh, remind or reinvent the word toilet uh, would be as a testimony of truth and lies. So uh, to put it across... I, I didn't hear that. You said don't? Truth and lies. Ah, okay, okay. Testimony of truth and lies. <laughs> okay. So, uh, truth and lies. Would, okay. Yes. So uh, if you're looking at uh, from a very uh, public perspective or from a citizen perspective, uh, we have the habit of reviewing and participating in the production of everything we consume. 
So we do it from art forms, movies, all the kind of uh, products, everything that we get in the market. And uh, strangely and surprisingly, we don't do it with our public infrastructure or in anything that is so it somehow so, uh, just try to explain that I and mean, what does that mean for us for a for a very commoner for a very simple ma man woman who's yeah. watching this show yeah so, so we, we are used to reviewing movies we are used to reviewing everything which we consume uh so we, we give our comments we uh, give our feedbacks uh, we raise our alarms uh we bring to notice we have campaigns so many things are going for keeping many of our consumables in our right place. But somehow, our public domain is never going through that process. So, uh, and that is where our public consciousness is majorly built in our public spaces. Uh, so, which means there is somewhere a disconnect between what I consume and what is being produced. So, for example, uh, you don't get to see a bus stand reviewed, a bus stand which is badly made, reviewed by the public. Okay, you don't get to see... Uh... I mean, this, is, this is music to my ears, you know, because for, I, after a long time, I'm hearing someone who speaks about, you know, public reviewing public spaces. Like, great, I'm, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah because uh, we don't uh, relate to it as something we consume. Okay, which means somewhere at the production level, some information is actually not democratized to the public. Okay, so there is a gap, whether it's fabricated or not, there is a gap. So uh, in a way, at an ideological level, our public domains are not really democratized at, at its knowledge scale. So as a consumer, I really don't know the dynamics of me. So I, I'm getting curious now, curious and more curious when, as you're speaking. So what does that mean? I mean, the whole question of the whole bundle of ideological moorings that you've just said about, yes. you know, not getting democratized. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please. Yeah. That's where I want to bring in toilets. <laughs> so you really don't know whether flyover makes sense or not. Okay. We believe it makes sense or not. We really don't know the crows we pump into the idea of development as we see it really makes sense or is it going to make any lives better? So you you that information you don't have. Go to a toilet, toilet tell you the truth. Because that is a testimony of truth of what we stand for. Because toilet is a place where the, the public, actually the humanity express themselves in the most honest form. So sitting here across the scenes, we share a body language. Because there is a notion of place it is being watched. So our, our body languages are coded. But the moment you go into a loo, it's all different. It, it's, it's an intimate expression of your ultimate honesty. So I would call it a testimony of truth. At the same time, it's a testimony of lies. As for us, the production or the, the design and manufacturing uh, of that public utility by, say, our governments. So it is kind of a very interesting inter intersection of us and the top. So the grassroots and the top are connected with truth and hypocrisy there. Hope I could convey it well. Oh, that, that's, that's fabulous. It's very interesting. And I, I can see because I've served the city for five years being the direct elected deputy mayor. So I can understand what you're saying. And, I'm, and that's why I said it's music to my ears. But then... <laughs> You know, how do you break this disruption? I mean, you know, because this is such a gigantic scale that we're talking about. Billions of rupees we are pumping in into constructing toilets. At the end of the day, we have a review of SBM1 where the workers have said, you know, maybe 20 or 30% of the toilets are not put to use, you know, because the design, the structure is such. So, and since you've had that first-hand experience of uh, engaging with this process, so how do you bring a disruption to that and, you know, make toilets, uh, I mean, as you said, I mean, you know, a kind of uh, space or place uh, where, where, where this, whole, uh, uh, this whole idea of people reviewing it really becomes quite instrumental into steering forward. To make any system 
to exist in its most powerful form, the best way is to democratize it in the most truthful way. So uh, what is the hindrance? Before we talk about the, the disruption, I think we should talk about the hindrance. Yeah, the uh, hindrance, yeah, the, yeah, the hindrance, yeah. yeah great. It's, uh, in India, uh, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan is uh, essentially uh, a product of Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, uh, which is a production unit with engineering as its basis, where the the fund flow may, I mean it is it is quoted majorly because there is no real uh, data of like what is the split, but it is essentially going into production of infrastructure. So to instead of me pointing out, I can give probably a better example across the world, where you have say an African country Rwanda, uh, where. Uh, Health sector also played a very important role in their national sanitation policy. So what happened is, apart from just making it building production, you are looking at health department also incentivizing toilets based on the performance. So, which is probably one probable component of an innovation that you can bring in to break. So we when we talk about disruption. So when when we so as as a as a citizen, I'm really not aware who is this Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and what is that instrumental channel of bringing out a toilet. So when it is probably the CPWD um, designing the policy, engineering becoming the key factor, and that is transport to local self-government bodies. Essentially, we are looking at building production, but actually it's a culture. Sanitation is a culture, and from a policy level, we have never responded to it. I think that's something very interesting. I mean, so, so the so the, you pointed out a hindrance. I mean, could you be more elaborate on the hindrance? But I think this is a catch. I mean, you know, it's it's not engineering. It's not producing engineering stuff. It's about culture, and how do you build or bring this culture? But could you just elaborate more? I mean, that Uganda experience is like really very interesting. Where you know, it's not just the the urban department or whatever, uh, but it's the health also that's that that there's complete engagement. So could you just elaborate more in the Indian context so, so that yes, we could the convergence just... that we uh, look at Rwanda has uh, housing authority playing a role. Okay, health sector playing a role, education sector also playing a key role. So when you are looking at production of an infrastructure from a convergence which is like energizing the interest. Now, so this, I, I just mentioned a hindrance from the top. Now we can look at the hindrance from the bottom, which everybody will relate to, okay? So when when we're crying for toilets, which are like where women's, women's literally can't, uh, women can't actually access public toilets. Uh, but what if I am stating it this way? You, women hardly, consume water during their navigation time. And if we are bringing out a survey of vulnerability to probably urinary tract infection kind of diseases, which is like really alarming and the rate is at least empirically very high. Uh, and if that is connected to infrastructure, think of the connection between health and the infrastructure at the top level a country has innovated. So, so from Great, top, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you brought that. Yeah, yeah. Please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. So you you're looking at every kind of disconnected disconnection, simulating at the top and bottom equally. So, so we, how have we responded to it? As a policy, we have responded to it with quantities. So probably that is where when you're looking at Swachh Bharat Abhiyan indicators and achievements in numbers. Uh, so, but. Uh, if you're looking at, say, the women population totally abandoning the existing toilets because they are not accessible, is numbers the real uh, indicator of accessibility? Accessibility has to be defined as who gets what, when, and where. Then that please, brings please, please. I, I, I would love you to elaborate who gets what, when, and where. Just elaborate that more. 
for for a common person. Actually, yeah. being so far defined with numbers and probably with pathways connecting because these are predominant planning language we are used to. We need all those languages. They are very inevitable. But at the same time, the moment we are defining accessibility from a design perspective, from a social perspective, just answer the question, who gets what, when and where? So who is getting the toilet, when and where? So who actually is the question that links to inclusivity? So you are looking at women not accessing. You're looking at transgender community not accessing. On toilets not accessible for them. That is kind of a grave, undemocratic gesture we are giving. And you are not having kids accessing. So even if you're looking at communities where you have kids' toilets, kids everywhere, even if it even if in an ODF state, in 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 the low-income households and communities, kids are made to open defecate. Mothers will, you know, conveniently let the kids open defecate. What happened that is um, leading to very commonly seen patterns of diarrhea in the communities, which is leading to kind of malnutrition, which is leading to irregular presence in schools, which is leading to a, probably a form of citizen who might otherwise might have done a better uh, process or job in their learning process. So in a way, you are producing a form of productive citizen with the form of retardation in their learning process and growing up process through a malfunctioning infrastructure. So in a way, you are affecting okay. your GDP. Great. Now, 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 what what is the ma I mean, maybe two more important questions. One, we would like to know, you know, your work, how you were able to bring in people and you know also a, a paradigm shift into i would say planning process or the design process but before that what do you think should be a major disruption if i if i ask you i mean we we i mean we've discussed the current model which is quite uh, top bottom and it's just an engineering stuff fantastic but what should be the major disruption you know and what could pay way for maybe next year when we discuss on world toilet day we said okay this is what we suggested and nothing has happened, maybe, but yeah, something has happened. So what do you think should be the, the, the major disruption that we need to bring in? So from our point of view, from the kind of uh, work we have done and the experience we've gained, uh, so we can take each of the problem and try to solve it. But make the process to facilitate a very powerful word, word which is innovation at the policy level to a grassroots level. So, so innovation is kind of a loosely used word. So if the policy has to innovate, the policy has to get on the ground. Okay, so innovation is all about reading the right knowledge. So what we have is a knowledge gap. So the policy accessing the ground knowledge will innovate the policy. The ground accessing the policy will innovate the ground. So uh, we can give you certain examples. Uh, so when you are looking at... Please, yeah. Please, yeah. <laughs> so the way the toilets are framed are ad hoc process by probably one engineer figuring out a piece of land unused and then some composition of lines to make best use of it. Okay. So that... Let's assume that person is a policymaker. That policymaker has not seen the usage pattern because that policymaker is an engineer in the top layer because in, in our democratic structure. So the moment the policy uh, maker is given the information that in a row of toilets in the inside the cubicle, you tend to see the commode which is a Western or Indian, whichever, you tend to see the commode much cleaner when the light is kept right above it. So the user will tend to clean it. The cleaner will also tend to clean it. Then the policymaker will innovate. Okay. The policymaker is getting to see 
how difficult so light is so essential yeah yeah yeah, yeah. light is so essential yeah. but that is always loosely yeah. kept so we notice like when it is kept right above the commode and the commode is getting a special attention the commode will get the special the very special attention from the user and also from the cleaner so so that is when the policy maker is enabled with the knowledge to innovate okay when the policy maker is looking at how difficult the person who's cleaning how difficult is it for that person to clean the corners the po policy maker will just innovate how the corners should be like so how difficult is a brush to go to the corners you can actually make a difference in the way because these are all like genesis of dirt toilet has so when i said genesis of dirt it is about a cultural value of dirt because our association with dirt is totally different so actually instead of making the nation uh, in, instead of eradicating odf we should have actually learned from the patterns of odf and reinvent because that so from from using uh, our discard as a manure we have flushed so ganga before i mean I, i'm just curious to know when you just created this uh, uh, this term you know our notion of uh, culture of dirt so you know what is our notion and what should not be our notion yeah so there is nothing wrong in keeping the notions so i don't know if there is like what should not be our notions but we haven't had enough notions are so that's when like you define odf before you define odf you try to eradicate so before you read what odf meant we yeah, tried that's it. important and, and, and intervention was something alien so there is nothing that facilitated to go back and check how can we reinvent that because mm. there was a, a pattern of networking there was a pattern of resources going back as manual there was some errors in that class yeah, yeah instead of fixing that errors we we eradicated that now we are like flushing to forget and that i just want to i yeah before before i just want to share a very funny anecdote with you yeah i don't know how much you like apples but since i come from a state that produces apples and guess the best apple producing villages in himachal are nako and chango and what they use is human manure yeah because they have those dry <laughs> that's exactly the point here and you know exactly the reverse what we did in lay because i was instrumental in writing the vision document of lay and you won't believe because tourism in flux now shifted from their dry toilets to the flush stuff and now they've already contaminated 95% of their uh, you know water sources which are not even 10 meters below earth. so yeah so exactly the point that you that you're saying yeah please yes. go ahead yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah what we did is from a recycling and reuse perspective we just shifted to flushing and forgetting yeah yeah then <laughs> ideally the, all the public sector stps are the biggest polluters of our entire water network so so what are we doing so, I, we... so, so i remember ganga, ganga your teacher and also not my formal teacher but my teacher also kt uh reminds me of um, of his very fa famous proverbial anecdotes that he shares is that the solution to pollution is dilution and he said we borrowed it from the west <laughs> you know and that's how the public health crisis uh, i mean really led to urban planning and exactly the same is what we are doing here you know yeah. flushing it and taking to the stps and then further you know uh, contaminating the entire ecosystem or aquifers yeah exactly please please please, please. i just want maybe to maybe i can draw a very simple parallel way of defining it that is as of now what has to go to soil is going to the water yeah and what has to go to the water is going to the soil yeah <laughs> true we, we made that okay we made <laughs> that and now we are struggling and spending crores to this in reverse it mm. as mm. yeah maybe that is a fun now now yeah now ganga we would like to know more about you know the work that you've been able to do you know uh, so uh, i mean the, particularly about kerala because i was part of your talk in the habitat center so if you could just share uh, you know the entire process of engaging with the communities and like bringing in some uh, alternatives paradigm change 
I, I mean, I think everyone would love to watch that and hear. So, so it's it, it, it's a very multi-layered process because huh. uh, we started with our ego getting crumbled that designers can't just solve the toilets. So we built this. Come again. The, the designers so, can't just solve. Okay. The, the infrastructure designers yeah, not yeah, yeah. to tackle because as we read toilets more and more, the toilets became like such a huge and complex issues where you're looking at the infrastructure problem, you're looking at the water problem, you're looking at the gender problem, uh, and you're looking at the politics of caste, which is like very important. And uh, so, so it is going like multi-layered and, and the, the, the whole system is already dealt uh, as a building problem, but the, the complexity is like way higher than what we're looking at. Uh, so that is when we thought we are not enough. So we created a platform for protest. That okay. is called Kakusap. Uh, that is called? So it's an app. Uh, okay. And it's Kakus app. Mm -hmm. Kakus is a Malayalam and Tamil word for toilet. Okay. And um, okay. whoever, like whichever uh, um, language you have as your mother tongue, if you just think, mostly, most of the context, uh, that word, the word for toilet in your native language always comes with a form of shame. Mm -hmm. So we took it as the brand name for that movement. So uh, the app, uh, so the app was never a solution. App was a platform for protest. You mm -hmm. can uh, go deal with the toilet. You can add all the information to the toilet and you can also read the toilets you can also put put up pictures because this there is a story of toilet there are many toilet stories inside every individuals in a country and all those stories are sadly negative so we wanted them to collectively flow out and then we we did this mapathons so that kind of knowledge, which is probably democratically produced, became a very powerful thing because that changed the entire dynamics of like understanding that one phenomenon. So that is when you're looking at what is the meaning of access. I don't know if you can, if you have thought about it, most of the commercial streets, many, uh, many areas are not facilitated with the public or common toilets. Yeah. Uh, and probably then the casualty being of a hospital, hospital that have a toilet inside, that behaves like a problem. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at uh, toilets being occupied or converted to probably a shop. So you're mm -hmm. looking at toilets being um, vandalized uh, by very interesting other uses. Because in a place where cigarette smoking in public is banned, you will see a different form of, <laughs> and that True. is like uh, you can bring your cigarette and smoke, but you will have to pay for uh, smoking. But if you're buying from my shop, you can smoke for free. Okay. okay. So 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 we are selling everything else other than toilet in a toilet. So mm -hmm. which means we are underplaying that in infrastructure. And, uh, and somehow we have fabricated that notion that it is underplayed in our all consciousness. So we have a company, but it's never alarming. So it is something that is normalized. Uh, and, and there is a lot of vested interest in normalizing because every toilet carries a grain network in the city. Uh, so, so the platform enabled the designers and mm -hmm. probably policy makers also so maybe that is where for the first time we're looking at the distribution on a map uh, that is when you're looking at what is the meaning of accessibility so most of the corporations might give us a list of x number of toilets and mm -hmm. when, when you're putting it up as a democratic process you will get to see four x number of toilets mm -hmm. so so public will count say a public library toilet which is public okay public will count 
uh, any other public infrastructure to a government office to for that matter. Uh, or, or probably many other private producers are also there. So then, uh, so that data is very interesting. So, okay. so that data gave us an idea of like, why can't we have a toilet master plan for a city? If the city is leveraging master plan for everything that is supporting the economy. So, so you build that toilet master plan. You don't call yeah. it a city. You don't call it a city sanitation plan, but a toilet master plan. Yeah, because um, so yeah. I don't know if any city has a burning desire to make it. Winning <laughs> 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 the yeah. plan board because we have yeah. like different cities expressing different needs as stakeholders. Yeah. So this is like a macro perspective, okay. but when you come down, so I was talking about the light, I was talking about the corners because nobody mm. has the sensitivity for. Mm understanding what is needed because nobody cracked it. <laughs> Toilet surgeries to understand the chemistry okay. of the toilets. And that, so toilet surgeries and chemistry of the toilets. Yeah, great. <laughs> and that led us to uh, come up with something called toilet toolkit. Okay. So using the toolkit, anybody in the system can actually okay. make a toilet at least much better <laughs> and Great. so why we call it toolkit and why we not calling it guideline is mm -hmm. toolkit can help you innovate okay so one innovation we did is very strange uh, because we face this very uh, strange phenomenon of vandalism purposefully so every mm -hmm. toilet to go back every week so so with the toolkit enable to toilet actually enable us to innovate with reflections. So the question is, will you vandalize looking at yours? Mm -hmm. So you're bringing that idea of self, which is already there in the toilet, mm -hmm. in an exaggerated way. So okay. surprisingly, in two months, you never call back to that toilet for any form of it. So, yeah. so maybe as a designer, you can existentially also look at toilet. So that is where innovation is coming, but from a design perspective, but from planning perspective, product design, from all the sensitive forms of how a user and probably uh, a cleaner will look at a toilet. To toolkit is one one um, okay one form of innovation we could make. Okay. Uh, parallelly, we are also working with urine. Uh, with urine. Okay. Yeah, so that's 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 when the question is like, what what has an open designer got to do with urine? <laughs> uh -huh. So we are taught to look at just physical context. <laughs> urine is a very important context because the uh -huh. entry of any toilet is defined. Uh -huh. urine. <laughs> so the toilet will have a smell emitting radius <laughs> defined by urine, and that's yeah. a very powerful agent working in a toilet. And we are. Okay exploring its productive site of ex by extracting uh, struvite from the urine. So that might inform the physical design of a toilet because a urine yeah, 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 in the yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, That's... and you don't need heavy infrastructures mm. uh, in place of it. So, so then we, we, we are looking at context, which are not conditioned to be context. Mm. So, sanitation literacy is one important component. Okay, because we are looking okay. at the kids' uh, interface with, because kids are never consumers of toilet. And uh, so, in, in the low income communities, especially. Okay. And uh, so, o ODF survey is a quantitative survey mm -hmm. where, uh, where it is the infrastructure getting surveyed where more than the culture getting surveyed. So that is where uh, the same kid growing up is actually like the holders of culture going. In. So that is where we are, you know, engaging in sanitation literacy, where toilet becomes a different form of knowledge system that we can spread. How do, so, so how do you go about sanitation literacy? You visit schools, uh, just share your toolkits. I mean, what is the what is the mode in which you are, you know, spreading this word? So sanitation literacy is a component where um, beyond awareness and uh -huh. education, 
can Tolik be an agent of enlightenment? Okay, that's interesting. It, yeah. it for us. Yeah. So it, it yeah, just yeah. might as well happen. Uh, so yeah, yeah. we're tying up with uh, dominant schools uh, in the first place, where uh, it is about uh, not about teaching and learning alone. It is also about okay. unlearning. So it is about like leadership responding to the context from the school. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is about unlearning and awareness of what already, because every school has the maximum number of toilets in the campus, because every yeah. fund is getting spent on producing and the next fund is getting you know, spent on uh, producing. The same happens with the city also. Yeah. So yeah. that's what the fund which is coming in the next pages for again producing and the same holds. Yeah. So when we did this mapathon, we got like 1,459 toilets in a city like Chennai. And mm -hmm. out of uh, more than 850 belongs to Greater Chennai Corporation. So we're still building new, but the old <laughs> stock, so awaiting yeah. for the new stock to join them. Uh, so the same thing happens in the school. So it is about like, you know, your cognition getting alert on what is existing. That is what I'm learning right. So uh, thank you so much, Kanga. It's really being, uh, as you said, uh, the enlightenment from the toilet. I think this World Toilet Day today is also would be kind of enlightenment from this discussion that we've had. And thank you. <laughs>